Welcome to the BH Facilities Podcast. And now here's our host, Robbie Parker. Thanks, Robert. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the Facilities Podcast. This is where we talk about everything maintenance. Don't have a long um, podcast for you today, but there is a uh, section I'd like to go over and, and cover with you. Um, it is on SOP 1. 335 if you want to follow along uh it's on document storage and management and you think well why is this important to a service team member service manager why do i need to know because uh there are three different types of um storage for documents and i'll go through the, those and then i'll kind of run down through the list of where each should be housed so there are three areas that we will house documents. Uh, one of them will be a physical binder, okay? Old school physical binder. It's got to be three rings. Uh, it's got to be labeled according to what the document uh, requirement is or the log. Um, and it's to be labeled inside the binder. And you have to maintain it on site in an easily accessible location for all on-site employees. So that's the first one, that's a physical binder. The second would be an electronic folder. An electronic folder can be found in typically, uh, be it SharePoint, you go under property ops, go under properties, and under your property, you will find a folder called binder. Uh, and under that is uh, under the documents header. So that's where electronic files are kept. And then the third method of uh, storage would be our mobile maintenance platform, which currently is SitePlan. So those are the three areas where we are required to keep and house any of our, our, our checklists and our logs and things of that nature. So I'm gonna run through very quickly, just some categories. Um, we'll start off with the most, uh, I, I said, most simplest, and that would be our mobile maintenance platform being site plan. So what do we keep in there? Your community opening checklist is housed in site plan. Uh, you complete that uh, on a daily basis. Um, the next one is packages accepted in the office is also uh, tracked in site plan. Now, if if you're not on the mobile maintenance platform and no package locker or delivery service, then you have to retain those in a binder, a physical binder. Otherwise, you would keep all those documents in uh, site plan. Uh, the other is the bi-weekly lighting inspection. Those are also housed in site plan. Um, those are auto generated on the first and the 15th of every month. So those are naturally when you complete those, we can go and create filters and pull that reporting out of site plan. So that's really the short list of documents that require storage in site plan. So now let's move up to the next step and let's uh, talk about electronic binders. That would be in SharePoint. Uh, as I described. And again, as a reminder, this is all in SOP 1335. So you can pull this up. It's broken out in a nice chart format so that you can see just like I'm walking you through this process now. So an electronic binder, that would be rent uh, specials and pricing. Those are stored daily. Your weekly team meetings, those are stored electronically in that folder. Uh, any courtesy offer, community uh, relations reports, those are also stored there. Here's a key uh, piece of document information that you want to keep, and that's your emergency procedures manual should be kept in the SharePoint folder. Now, why? Because if you happen to be away from the property and you have some type of natural disaster or fire, flood, anything of that nature, you can access SharePoint from your phone. You could go into your documents and you can pull your emergency procedures uh, binder there. So it should have like your vendor contact information, police, fire, 
ambulance, all of the pertinent information is in there so you can have access through your phone. So that's another electronic reminder. Safety meetings are also required to be kept uh, in SharePoint. Uh, let's see, pest control logs, uh, any letters to residents, resident communications, legal documents, and your make ready logs and housekeeping logs should be kept in that SharePoint page, along with any city inspections, lender inspections, fire inspections, REACT inspections, anything like that would be in that folder. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now let's talk about physical three ring binders. What is required there? Pretty much SDS sheets. Those are required hard copy in a binder, uh, typically in the shop. Uh, all your refrigerant tracking logs, that's version, refrigerant, recovered, intact refrigerant, and accidental and unintentional vending forms are all physical three ring binders. Your swimming pool log is also a uh, uh, three ring binder, snow re removal uh, logs. Also wouldn't hurt to make an emergency procedures manual. You can have it in SharePoint and you can have a printed hard copy um, in case you want to, you know, print a copy, have it in your car, uh, keep it on site where it's easily accessible. The only problem we have with that is if you, if you have something happen to the leasing center uh, where that physical binder is kept, then you wouldn't have access uh, to it. So. Uh, that's why we say you could do either, but um, it's always good to have it in a electronic binder. Uh, let's see what else we got. We covered uh, your key control log uh, should also be a um, hard copy. Uh, your pest control log should be a binder. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, again, all of this information can be found in SOP 1335 talks about you know where you should keep your your binders physical binders electronic folders and a site plan uh, if you're not familiar with site plan and how to pull reporting uh, we've got several um, training sessions on that we talk about it quite a bit and it's in creating filters by creating filters you can tell site plan specific information that you want to uh, see uh, and there's ways to filter down to just get information on biweekly and lighting inspections or whatever it may be. And then you, you can print that out and have a report. So, again, very important to be aware of and know where these documents are housed because it's part of the new scorecard, uh, the, the new MSA process, uh, all of that. Uh, includes uh, documentation. So just thought it'd be uh, pertinent to go over that and kind of uh, tell you w the different types of storage methods and what uh, each thing should be, where it should be stored. So um, with I will turn it back over to Robert, see if we have any questions. Uh, yeah, I have a question and an observation. So the, the question is, I know you've mentioned in the past that uh, one of the inspections we hope to eventually get into site plan is the emergency lighting inspection. Mm -hmm. um, in the meantime, for those people who are actually going out there and doing emergency lighting inspections, uh, do you recommend those be put into SharePoint or the actual three ring binder or both so with the emergency lighting you you have the ability to uh you know create tasks and all that so if you're currently doing and when i say emergency lighting i am talking about exit light signs uh, uh wall pack signs i call them frog guys that lights in the hallways with battery backup that's what we're referring to when we, we talk about emergency lighting. You can simply go in and create a task and site plan and, and under lighting and just make a comment. Uh, you can assign, instead of opening a task and assigning it like per unit, you should have the option to assign it by phase and the property name. So, you know, if I'm at uh, Avant at Pembroke Pines, 
I would go down to where it says phase Avant at Pembroke Pines and I would select that. So that means the entire property. So I would create a task. I would use the phase and property name and I would just make uh, under lighting and then I can put comments. All emergency lighting was checked and documented in, in good uh, operational uh, uh, you know, performance, whatever you may want to label it and close it out. Our one of our initiatives for the facilities team this year is to actually develop that within site plan. So I would say no later than than the end of the year, Q4, we will have that inspection built. And just like we do the biweekly lighting inspections, it'll be automated. It'll only be twice a year uh, to do that. So we're looking at automating that. But to your point, if you're doing it now, just open a task, assign it to the phase, make your comments in there, notes, and close it out so it's documented that you, you've done it. Uh, that's where I would do it right now. Good. And the observation is uh, accident reports. Um, I know those are kept in SharePoint. There's there's mm -hmm. a spot for those. Uh, as the pool instructor, the CPO instructor, it is advisable for any accidents that take place in the pool area, basically in th anything inside that fenced in area um, to once that report has been filled out in SharePoint, if your manager does it, get them to print a copy of it so that you can keep them with your pool logs because the pool inspectors do occasionally ask for those. Technically, we're supposed to report those to the pool inspector when they come out. Mm -hmm. So rather than have them standing around waiting for you to go in, locate them, print them, it's a good idea to print those and have those with the pool logs. And which brings up another good point, too, that's not actually listed. If you open this SOP 1335 and, and look at each one, there's no mention in here of the microbial growth response form, okay? That is a physical three-ring binder that you should keep on site. And every time you've got a, a water intrusion issue and it's documented, that's where it goes. We are also in the process of trying to get that into site plan as well. The key to that is uh, we've got it built. Uh, it's in the demo site that we use for testing and, and analysis. What we're waiting on is the ability for site plan to what we what I call advanced triggers. So once something is done in site plan, it will trigger an automation to do the next step. So the big thing with the microbial growth response form is that we typically, you know, because it's, it comes later, we forget about is the seven day follow up. That is a key critical piece of information that should we have to go to court that we need showing that we took all the necessary steps to remediate a unit and, and get it dry and put it back in place. But then seven days after we close that out, we have to go and revisit and take readings just to make sure that the issue did not reoccur. And we have to document that. So that's what we're waiting for. The automation between site plan is once I close out the microbial growth response form in site plan, it will auto generate the seven day follow up seven days after I close it out. So it'll pop up and say, hey, you've got to go reinspect this unit. So that's another thing that we're trying to automate this year. And hopefully it will come out before the end of the year. Uh, we've got it built. Uh, we're just working with site plan on getting the automation. So uh, that way you'll be able to take your picture, notes, everything right there from your phone. And we can get away from, you know, one more physical binder. So that is the goal for this year. Good information. That's all I had. So with that, I appreciate everything that everybody does day in and day out. Uh, we're coming up on... Uh, Tomorrow, March 1st, we'll launch the Spring Preventative Maintenance uh, Master Project. So uh, I recently sent out an email just reminding everybody, hey, it's going to launch tomorrow or on March 1st. And don't wait until August to complete your PM because you lose all the benefits of doing the preventative maintenance program. Try and get it done, done by at least, and depending on your make, market, uh, it could be May, it could be June, uh, but try and get it done as soon as you can. 
That way you can reap the full benefits of the PM program. So that launches tomorrow. But again, with that, I appreciate everything you do day in and day out. And with that, I will end with, with stay safe and stay strong.